good. Okay, so uh, the 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 reason behind this is that um, I, I'm I've written a book book on mathematics, and I was updating it, and the, and the previous version of um, of the book was written in LibreOffice uh, with uh, with LibreDraw. Uh, it contains a couple of dozen diagrams, and uh, and I really hated doing those. Uh, and so I decided to do the new edition of the book in XHTML with CSS and SVG. Now, the problem with SVG is that it's, as far as I'm concerned, apart from that it's not entirely uh, declarative, uh, but it's got some shortcomings for the use that I wanted, uh, I wanted it for. Um, the, as, as far as I'm concerned, the SVG coordinate system is upside down. Plus is, is downwards, and whereas in mathematics, plus is upwards. So I could, of course, I kept getting it wrong, and of course I could co correct it, but I, I had a couple of dozen of these things, and, and I kept making the mistake of mixing up my pluses and minuses, because of course I was thinking plus upwards, but then I had to diagram it with plus downwards. There are some things that made hard in SVG. For instance, you can't have negative heights, which I, I think is absolutely astounding, and I think is actually a bug in SVG. Um, and there are some abstractions that I needed, like dots and arrows, which again, you can build them, but, but you know, they're abstract, basic abstractions that I needed. Uh, another thing is that the diagrams are, oh, I'm not sure why it's not wrapping. Uh, the diagrams are, uh, are um, often progressive, that one diagram uh, is, is, is a later version of an earlier one, and I wanted to make sure that they co corresponded uh, that, so that I could easily easily compare them. So what I did was I designed a domain-specific mini-language uh, that supported my abstractions that had dots and arrows. It used the mathematical coordinate system. It had negative heights, all of this stuff. And I wrote an XForms interpreter that displays each diagram by interpreting mine, turning it into SVG, and then, and then displaying it on the screen. So my basic data structure uh, uh, looks like this. Um, uh, so uh, I've got, a, it's just a, a string of diagrams. Each diagram has got a title. Uh, that index at the top was just uh, the one that it opens up at so that when I'm working with the newest one, uh, that, that it, when I s start the app up, that it starts with the one that I'm working on. Um, each uh, diagram contains a, a number of, uh, 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 of primitives. Uh, for instance, dot, line, arrow, uh, which has got a, 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 an arrow head at one end, arrow two, which uh, arrow head at both ends, circles, texts. In fact, uh, this has got much easier now in the next version because uh, uh, I, I just have a position of X, Y with commas in it uh, so that I don't have to separately do the X and the Y that I can just uh, put it all in one attribute. Um, uh, but uh, this was the very first version. And then uh, I have my interpreter. Uh, so I have two triggers for, uh, for going between uh, different, uh, different diagrams. And then I got a bunch of SVG, which uh, um, interprets the current, uh, the current diagram. So uh, uh, there's an index uh, value, uh, which I uh, uh, update with the, uh, with the triggers. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the SVG just displays Dis well, the SVG has got then the bit of XForms in it that for displaying the current uh, current diagram. And so what I do is uh, I take the uh, title and I just display that up at the top. And then I do a repeat over all the elements within my diagram. And if it's a line, I do something. And if it's a circle, I do something else. And if, I, uh, if it's an arrow, I do something else. Uh, so this was a very quick and dirty solution for, at that time, a one-off problem. Um, if I had, and this is what I said at the beginning of this year, if I'd have needed it more often, I would have generalized it further. I have now since used it more, uh, including in that my speech, my talk just at 11 o'clock. Uh, so I've started generalizing it more, adding more primitives, and um, also thought about doing the sort of stuff that, uh, that Nico was talking about yesterday. This simple solution served its purpose well, and, and in fact, uh, it looks like I'm going to be using it for more. So let me now demo my system. So this was just my first test. Uh, so you can see lines. You can see I can rotate stuff, uh, and I can put text on lines. Um, uh, so here are, are arrows. Uh, 
um, and, and rectangles. So this is where we see the, uh, um, uh, the, the, where I have to compare uh, uh, diagrams. So here's the shorter version, here's the longer version, here's a, a, a rotated version, here's an even longer version. So I can, I can compare them to make sure that they, they do match up with what they're, they're meant, to, uh, meant to be saying. Um, and uh, so th the, while these are not exactly declarative, I still have to do a lot of work. Um, I can see me methods of making it more declarative and, uh, and uh, in the future, I, I, I'm gonna work on this, uh, work on this more uh, to, make it, um, uh, to make it easier to use. And so in a minute, we'll see. Yeah, there you go. All right, that was it. Any questions? Oh yeah. Oh, we've got some questions. Oh, Nico, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Many questions. Let's start with Nico from the machine room. Thank you. So one of the things that I saw was that you need to specify the X and Y coordinates and yeah. um, probably their dependencies. That, so that's the next stage yes. to make. So, so for instance, what I want to be able to say is a row of these three things. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then I've got another three things which I'm going to pile on top of that. So uh, I don't know if you did you ever knew, know views? Yes. So uh, yeah, we we yeah, had yeah. graphics like yes. that, and so yeah. I want to develop that, but then with uh, with X forms and 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 SVG. Yeah. So in uh, programs like PowerPoint, you can attach an arrow, the beginning or an end to an object. And yeah. You could do something like that. For instance, in this diagram, the the arrow on the right could go to the document triangle instead of a specific X and Y coordinates. You yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's exactly the, what I want to do. left side of document and Absolutely. then it will end at the right spot. Absolutely. Yeah. But this was quick and nasty to just get my diagrams. But having done that, then I saw all sorts of ways that I could generalize yes. it. But yeah. you're absolutely right. right. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. First, Matt. Um, I wondered, I saw in the, the recent snippet that you were doing the y-coordinate creation by just like negating it in yeah. your thing. Is there an advantage to doing that versus sticking the whole lot in a group and using the flippy affine transform? I am, that's, that would also be a possibility. There is a problem yeah. there. Is it possible you can just show the code behind the that diagram? Just just want to see what it looks like a little bit. What, 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 uh, the earlier slides? You no, were... this one is fine. I mean, any really. Oh, the code for these. Like, yeah, the the, the text. Uh, um, yes, I just have to remember where it is. Um, uh, let's go to Emacs, for instance, and then we say Xforms examples. I think it's in SVG. <coughs> I think it's called diagram dot XML, or it might be diagrams dot XML. No, no, it's di diagrams.xml. I think it's that one. Um, just a moment. I'll be right with you here. Right. Uh, too much. Yeah. Now, what would you like to see? No, I just, I was just interested to see. Oh, I see. Like, yeah. Thanks. So what, what you see here is the newer version where I've, um, <coughs> I, I've not got the as separate X and Y, but I've got ats. And the, there are certain things where... Uh, for instance, here uh, naught naught is is all is uh, zero zero is uh, is understood as default. Um, uh, so so it's not. I mean, I don't want you to look at this and say what a great design. It's 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 emerging, um, but uh, it's 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 given me something to think about how to do it how to do it better. Is John, that is that does this answer your question? See what it looked like. Yeah. So I mean, there's a question from Zoom from John Lumley. Oh yeah. Hello, John. Hi. Um. Well, first of all, to answer Matt's question about why why not put it in a group and sort of do a, a um a, a mirror inversion, uh, you do that and then you find all your text is upside down. <laughs> uh, um, the other thing is I've done an awful lot of work in this area where you basically add declarative, um. 
uh, constraints or information on the in a um, separate attribute namespaces on the SVG. Um, so, for example, if you take the case where you're saying all these things should be in a row, uh, then if you put that in a group and put a declaration on top of that group, then you can basically uh, come along at a net later stage and be, and eventually move all the children of that group to satisfy that constraint. And this sort of generalized and quite a long, many years ago, Cameron McCormack did, did a thing called constrained SVG, where basically you attach a constraint solver, um, solver into the browser such that if you move something around various constraints can work and it can the, the diagram can completely adapt to what you're doing like one bit stretches and other bits come out and there was another one of these where for a, a cyclic stuff you could basically um, uh, pre-compute what the effect of some external event would be on changing all the pieces inside the SVG itself. So there's an awful lot you can do um, having visibility with declarations sitting at various points inside the document, inside the SVG, still, still visible, but you've got enough information there to basically modify the SVG some, from some external agent. Well, thanks everybody. Let's go for lunch.